34 year old female presented with enlarging left neck mass. The preoperative ultrasound showed that the mass is right on top of the carotid sheath and it encapsulated within the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Although ultrasound is a useful tool for initial evaluation of vascular malformations, further cross-sectional imaging is necessary for diagnosis and preoperative planning. MRI gives information about the extension and anatomical relations of the malformation. The time-resolved contrast-enhanced MRA tells us about the hemodynamic properties. In this case, the mass isn't filling neither during the arteria nor the venous phase. Based on the clinical and MRI findings, we concluded it as a lymphangioma and it was supported by the intraoperative findings too. Eventually, we decided to take out the whole mass. After the lymphangioma was identified on ultrasound, a transverse incision was made right on top of it. The incision was carried out along the neck crease parallel with Langer's lines. This approach results in a better cosmetic outcome on the neck compared to longitudinal incision. Then we carried out the dissection through the subcutaneous layer, then we dissected the platysma. During dissection, we took care of small branches and we coagulated them. An electrocauter was used for dissection and care was taken to move towards the mass only in one layer in order to create the less possible injury and promote postoperative wound healing. We divided the platysma along the edges of the incision as well to take advantage of its full length. We improved our exposure by placing a retractor to raise the saplatisma flaps. We were able to get visualization on the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The lymphangioma is situated anteriorly inside of the sternocleidomastoid muscle encapsulated by its muscle fibers. At this point we had to free the lymphangioma from the sternocleoid. We carried it out with the use of dissecting forceps, electrocautery and blunt dissection. The lymphangioma was gradually freed by working our way around the mass. Here the last layer is removed above the lymphangioma, now we are able to visualize it. We started to free the mass from the lateral border of the lymphangioma and it was further continued towards the medial border. The preoperative MRI showed no contrast filling of the mass, thus there was no major bleeding expected, which is consistent with the intraoperative findings. Since the mass is located within the sternocleidomastoid muscle and it is superficial from the carotid sheet, 
No major anatomical structure gets in the plane of the dissection. The border between the sternocleidomastoid muscle fibers and the infrangioma is clearly visible, making dissection quite easy. The anterior border of the lymphangioma is freed up with electrocautery, dissecting forceps, and blunt dissection. The content of the lymphangioma is spilled out on the operating site it is clearly visible that the whole mass is deflated making further dissection easier We made sure the lymph that was spilled on the operating site doesn't co compromise our view, then carried out uh, further dissection circumferentially around the mass. Preoperative planning and preoperative imaging proved to be useful. Based on that, we were able to carry on with the procedure without any surprises. we were able to, to excise the whole mass from the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And the specimen was sent for pathology. We closed the platysma and the skin in a running fashion. The transverse incision and the atraumatic way of wound closure contributes to the best possible surgical and cosmetic results.